You're listening to Three Kitchens Podcast, hosted by home cooks, Erin Walker and Heather Dyer. Are you tired of cooking the same old things? So are we. Let's all get inspired, cook better, and eat great food. Welcome to Three Kitchens Podcast. We're back with another episode. I am one of your hosts, Heather Dyer, and I'm here with my friend, Erin Walker. Oh boy, I feel How's like a boxing champion <laughs> here. Got to warm up. <laughs> Get my fists up in the air. Get ready. We're co-hosting this one today because yeah. we're kind of both going to have a discussion piece on cooking with scraps of food, leftovers, how to make use of some things that will stretch your budget. Yeah, like what do you do? with all those odds and ends of produce Mm. that are either starting to go bad or you've chopped it off because you're not using it in the dish you're preparing and you don't know what to do with it. I mean, everybody knows you can compost. Most Mm. of us probably live in a place where if you don't have a garden, your town or city collects your scraps from you and creates compost for city gardens or gardeners as we do. And I have to admit, most Mm -hmm. of most of this kind of stuff for me goes in my compost bucket. Yeah. But we have a few ideas for using things in different ways that maybe maybe you can get a bit more food out of it before, Mm -hmm. you know, and then you compost less. Yeah, exactly. And sometimes you get excited and maybe you overbuy things at the store and you look in that crisper and you're like, oh my goodness, this is starting to go. What do I do with this? so that it doesn't just end up in the compost because it's gone bad. Or you've got that milk sitting in your fridge. We've got some tips for dairy too. Oh, good. So should we start with our favorite thing to do with leftover bits, Heather? It's probably like one of the easiest things you can do. The number one thing we like to make with leftover scraps of vegetables. And meat. Oh, and meat is broth. broth. Well, actually, I have a question. Now that I've said that, I have a question for you, Erin. Yeah. So I typically just make chicken broth. So if I've roasted Mm. a chicken, I save the carcass. I toss it in my freezer until later when I want to make broth out of it. Do you use any other types of meat, like scraps? I mean, not like scraps of purposely purchased broth bones, but like... Mm. Yeah, I guess Mm -hmm. I don't really... No, I don't. Okay. Well, I was just curious. My experience is mostly chicken. And if we're talking about saving it from the compost bin, yeah, I think this is one of the best ways to use those chicken bones. Yeah. If you want to talk about saving money with chicken, the number one way to cut down on your per pound price of chicken is to buy it whole and cut it into pieces. And when you do that, you end up with the back of the chicken. And those are the perfect pieces for turning into broth. It's full of bones, you get a little bit of fat and meat still on there. So after you've boiled this and made your broth, you can pull it out and it's, we love to call that the free meat. Free meat! Because (laughs) you get a little container of meat. And I do about three backs and three liters of water. And now you've got enough chicken to make soup and broth for it too, so. Mm And if you want more on that, Aaron did a whole video showing you how to cut up a chicken into pieces. And there was an episode, is it the same episode where you talked about cutting up the chicken that you made the arroz con pollo with the, with the free is. meat? Yeah. Free meat meal. It's really great. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of broth. Yeah. So food scraps, anytime you are chopping up vegetables, mm-hmm. peeling potatoes, Peeling mm-hmm. carrots, if you don't eat those bits. Yep. Any of those scraps, odds, ends, even the leaves from things. I don't yes. know. Any of it. Pop, toss it into your freezer. Yeah. I have a big Ziploc freezer bag that I've been using. I'm sure it's the same one I've been using for years. Right. It just, <laughs> I keep, at, when it's emptied, I rinse it out and dry it, and then I use it again. And I pull mm-hmm. it out of the freezer. I toss my scraps in. I put it back in the freezer until it's full. And then I have a chicken carcass and I put it all together and I make that as the base of my broth. I would just say wash your vegetables first Mm -hmm. and then it's all fair game. Yeah because you might not think of that Mm -hmm. oh I'm just gonna peel this onion so why would I wash it? 
Exactly. But if you yeah. want to save those peels to use, just give it a wash first. Yeah. And the other cool thing that you can do with the peels from onions or from garlic, keep them and save them because you're going to want to do this in a batch. And I do this with just in a jar on my counter is I keep all those peels and then give them a nice bath once you've got a bunch of them and rinse them down with like vinegar and water mixture and just really clean them off because they've got dirt and dust and stuff on them. Spread them out on a baking sheet, dry them till they're crisp and pop them in a blender and you have garlic powder or onion powder from the skins. That's such a great idea. I haven't yet done that. Last night I had all this garlic peels and I was like, oh, oh maybe I should start saving them. But I tossed them in my broth because <laughs> I just was like, next time, next time I'm going to do that. I keep a jar on my counter and it just holds my garlic peels. And I would say I can usually fit like a year worth of garlic peels in there because they are light. They crush down mm -hmm. tiny and you can just pack that stuff in that jar forever and ever and ever. And then I usually get enough garlic powder for the year out of it. And if wow. I'm doing it with my garlic from the garden, it's like 10 times better. And it's got the purple skin. So you can mm. see that purple in there and mm, it's delicious. So that's something that I learned just recently within the last couple of years to do. And I'm really enjoying having that. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea. Okay. A couple of other ideas to do with peel, since we're talking about peels and skins. Ooh. Okay. Let's talk about potato peels. Oh. Let's say you don't want the peels. I often just leave peels on my potatoes, but maybe you want a nice mashed potato without the bits of peel in there. Mm, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. You can toss the peels obviously into your broth bag, but if you don't want to, you can make chips out of them. Ooh! Don't wait too long because they kind of, I forget what the, is it oxidizing or? I think you're right. Yeah. They start to soften and get kind of weird. Yeah. They get mushy-ish. Yeah. Yeah. So kind of Right away, toss them with some oil spread and spread them on a pan, put some seasoning on there. I'm going to say kind of a low temperature, probably. Bake them in the oven and they get crispy. Ooh. You can try them that way. Mm, that sounds really good. I like that. One other thing I did was with carrot peels, you can candy them. Yeah. And I put them as a garnish on a carrot cake at Easter a few years ago. You just put them into a simple syrup. So like equal part water and sugar. Mm. Simmer the peels in the syrup for about 15 minutes. Drain them, let them cool so that you can handle them and then twist them. You could put them around the handle of a wooden spoon. Oh, that's um, how you get their shape. Yeah. So they make a little twisty coil. Okay. And then yeah. lay them down, like slide them off and lay them onto a sheet and bake them at a low temp, like 225 Fahrenheit or maybe half an hour and they become this crispy candy. Can you just eat them like that? Yeah, you can. Because totally. I feel like I would just eat candied carrots. I don't have time for a cake topper. <laughs> just... <laughs> they look really cool. And okay, everybody by now, if you're a regular listener, you know that I don't like decorating cakes, nor am I any good at it, which is probably why I hate it so much. Because <laughs> everything I try to make looks terrible. But this was like, so easy. Oh, I like that idea. Mm -hmm. They're nice. really cute. Um, and then one other thing, speaking of peels, we recently did an episode with about citrus peels. Oh, yeah. Where we used them to make an oleo saccharum, which is a syrup. You mix the peels with sugar and you let them sit and then you strain out this beautiful lemony syrup. You can do it with any citrus fruit. You did it with lemons. I did. And then I did it with orange peels. And then afterwards, I did the same. Well, I did a similar process that you did with creating um, a candied orange peel. Mm -hmm. So after I drained out the syrup, I then boiled the peels with the sugar and some water and they got soft and I chopped them up and put them in a batch of hot cross buns. Mm. And then I used that syrup on top of the buns too. It was Ooh, delightfulness. Yum. That was a good find. All right. Should we talk about some of the pieces that we don't know what to do with? Mm -hmm. This is probably where you get your most savings. If you're talking about stretching yeah. your grocery dollar a little bit. Exactly. And I often like buying the whole stems of broccoli that has the florid on top and then the stem on the bottom. 
and I've commented to people at the grocery store and they'll be like, oh, you should just buy the thing, the crowns over here because they're cheaper. And I say, oh, I like using the whole stem. And they're like, you cook with that? And so... <laughs> <laughs> Who are these people at the grocery store? It's probably, I, it's probably the voice I make at the grocery store. So that... <laughs> when you're like, why is this so expensive? Oh it's your God. inner voice. We're just yeah. now hearing <laughs> Isn't that what I sound like all the time? <laughs> <laughs> so the broccoli stem, I feel like is underused and or underrated. It's a little bit milder and it fries up great. It goes on the side so easily. And I always just peel some of the hard outsides off. Again, it goes, the peels go into my broth bin. And then you dice that up and if you've got, you can pop it in the freezer right away like that if you want to save it and use it with like frozen peas. If you've got frozen carrots diced up, toss it in a pan with some oil and then add some water, steam it a bit and now you have veggies on the side. Mm. And I feel like how often do we buy frozen veggies? And I mean, honestly, even if you only buy those crowns or whatever they call them, the broccoli mm -hmm. crown, it does have a stem on it. It, it There's does. not no stem. And especially no. if you're doing something like recently you made a broccoli salad that was so good. I've made it too. I've made it multiple times now. Yeah. And you really do just want the, the flower part. Yep. So you're going to have stems, even if you're only buying True a short enough. stem, right? I also think you just slice it, slice that stem up. You can toss it in stir fry. It's okay mm. if it's a little crunchy. You could even do it in a salad. It doesn't even need yeah. to be cooked. I've also seen that you can pickle those broccoli stems. I haven't yeah. tried it yet, but I think that would be tasty. And they've mm -hmm. got such a nice mild flavor. It's just a green vegetable. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It doesn't have any strange flavor or anything. I actually quite like them. I look forward to using both parts of my broccoli. Yeah, really good. So if you buy fresh beets or grow them in your garden and they still have the green leaves attached, don't be too quick to toss those out. Gosh, do not toss them out. <laughs> they are very nutritious and you can do all kinds of things with them. You can use them um, as you would spinach in lots of dishes. Mm, toss mm -hmm. them in soup at the end when this toward the end of cooking your soup and they just wilt down. You can freeze them and pull them out later and put them in smoothies if you like that kind of thing. What else? You could just use them fresh in a salad. So if they're mm -hmm. sometimes the one at the at the store, some of the bigger ones look a little bit battered. But when you get the smaller ones that are closer to the center, they're really really tasty in a salad. Mm -hmm. it's, it's one of our favorite things to have in a salad when we grow them in the summer. And like you said, they freeze up really great. You can use them in substitute of spinach if you're making like a quiche or a pasta or a soup that's got spinach in it. It's really good. Yeah, good point. I would just say like when you, you mentioned mentioned earlier celery leaves yeah definitely don't toss those out because they'll be great in your broth or any soup you're making yep if you don't like them quite so big just bunch them up chop them yep and toss them into something they have so much flavor mm -hmm. really the only part of the celery that you're not going to eat is the very that bottom end where they root. all join together <laughs> yeah you just have to wash celery really well yeah when you cook with leeks do you ever keep or use those fanned out leaves like the big thick parts at the top. I haven't. They end up in my bra. Yeah, I keep them, but I don't know what else you do with them. Mm -hmm. And again, all that stuff is going to end up in your compost, but now you've extracted more out of it. Yes. And speaking of getting more out of vegetables, if you boil or steam any vegetables and you have the water in the pot, mm -hmm. push it to the back of the stove, let it cool. And if you have any plants, put it on oh. your plants. Like in the summer, I always pour it in my garden and my pots because I don't have house plants because I have a cat who would make a mess of all of them but i think it would probably be just fine on a house plant as well that yeah you don't want you don't need to lose the the good stuff in there right yeah can we go down a side path on house plants and or garden plants sure i've recently kept all my eggshells i let them dry after i crack the eggs and then i pop them into a jar again and just crush them down i have a lot of mystery jars on my counter it's a dangerous place <laughs> <laughs> Make sure they're labeled. <laughs> yeah. uh, you just wash them down and then 
uh, put them on a baking sheet and let them dry in the oven at low temperature. And once they're all dried, put them in your blender, blend them up, and you've got a calcium powder for your plants. Yeah, maybe. and you can also soak banana peels yes, to create that. It's like a fertilizer. Potassium. I think it's the potassium yeah. in there too. Yeah. yeah, and it makes a it makes a fertilizer. So I mean, there's lots of ways to have a whole bunch of mystery jars on your counter. But if you <laughs> just get the most out of all the the yeah. stuff you're buying. Exactly. The other thing with eggshells in the garden. Oh yeah. You don't grind them up quite that. Just dry them yeah. and leave them. Leave some bigger pieces. Put that in your garden, and it helps deter slugs because the slugs don't like the jagged edges. Oh, there you go. Yeah, farm to table, back table back to the farm. Soil. Yes, exactly. <laughs> the most things can just be worked back into your yep. garden. Hey listener, have you visited our website? You'll find our entire catalog of episodes. Can you believe there are more than 170 of them? Including the Speakeasy cocktail series and almost all of our recipes. It's easy to find. Just type in www.3kitchenspodcast.com or check the show notes for a link. Now let's get back to the show. Should we go into the land of dairy? Sure. There's not a lot that you can do with dairy. Like once it's bad, it's bad. I always feel a little bit uncomfortable with some of those things because it can make you sick, right? Yeah. But um, one thing that you for sure can do is if you buy Parmesan cheese and you know how mm -hmm. there's always that thicker edge or that rind on the cheese, you can save that in your freezer and you can put it in your broth. You can add it into a spaghetti sauce if you're mm -hmm. cooking with it and it will soften up and absorb the liquid and it becomes this like chewy seasoned piece of cheese and oh it's so good heather and i do this and we <laughs> do not share this with anyone this is like the cook's prize nobody in the house knows i do this <laughs> you sit in the kitchen before you call them all for dinner and you enjoy your little gooey <sighs> Easy. My favorite is when it's been in like a meat sauce. Oh, yeah. It kind of seasons your whatever you're cooking. So mm -hmm. be aware of that if you're using it, that you're also tasting for salt because that'll add a little extra salt. Yep. And I've also started using it to make pesto. Those little bits, they actually break up okay in the blender. And so the olive oil, the basil, some nuts, and those Parmesan rinds and just plug your ears and press go because it's a little bit <laughs> loud <laughs> as it clatters around in the little plastic container as you're whizzing it up but mm. it leaves like a slightly bigger chunk in your pesto but if you heat that up say if you're putting your pesto with your fresh pasta mm. it absorb some of that pasta water and you get like these little bits of cheesy parmesani goodness in there Ooh, i don't yeah. know it's, That's it's a great good idea. stuff too <laughs> mm. so what was the other thing with dairy the other thing i wanted to talk about with dairy is buttermilk mm. or sour milk or when your milk start or your cream starts to go so i did a little bit of research on this Buttermilk traditionally is the liquid left behind after you make butter. However, mm -hmm. that's not what you're getting in your dairy cooler. What we're getting in our buttermilk containers is actually something that is being acidified by a specific bacteria. It's the process of bacteria taking the sugars in milk and turning it sour hmm. and making okay. an acid. If you have a pasteurized milk, a lot of your bacteria is out of there so that that process doesn't happen as fast. So as your milk starts to approach that best before date or it's sitting in there and it's a little bit past, if it's not slimy mm -hmm. or like you smell it and chunky, yeah, <laughs> then yeah. you can still cook with it. Mm. We often will sour milk on purpose when uh, we're making uh, baked items because that acid will be a little bit of a leavening agent with like your baking soda. Oh, I didn't actually know why. Chemistry, yeah. it's that acid and base sort of reaction that's going to bubble up and make your, your doughs puffier. So you can mm -hmm. still cook if your dairy's going. I bought eggnog over the holidays and nobody in my house drank any because it got shut into the back of my fridge. And I was like, oh my gosh, forgot about it. been here it. for too long because I saw the date had passed. 
So I took it out and I smelt it and I poured some in a glass and I was like, well, I don't know if I want to drink it. It's a little bit sour, but I can still bake with it because all those bacteria will get killed in the baking process. So I made eggnog muffins and they were delicious. Nice. Not a ton you can do with dairy stuff that's moving out, but I think you can at least hopefully avoid tossing it. Mm -hmm. Good to know. You know that I don't have the dairy expertise. When you open up or use like a non-dairy milk, so like an oat Mm -hmm. milk, does it ever go? Like what is, what is the shelf like? Cause I've actually, I almost never buy those milks. That's a good question. I don't think that it goes off. I've never noticed. I I don't buy a lot of it. I occasionally buy oat milk because I like Mm. to put it in my, in my coffee sometimes. The Mm. best before date, it's probably good for a year. And have you ever made your own oat milk? I have made almond milk. In and fact, it, I think I posted about it. That was a oh, while okay. back. So I saw somebody on Instagram doing this. The one I did okay. was sort of like the cheat version, oh. which was using a natural nut butter, oh, putting okay. it with water in the blender and just making a sort of cheater nut milk. I did it with almond oh, butter. Really? Made like a quick almond milk out of it. That's interesting to think about. So many thoughts, not enough brain space to answer all of them. No. <laughs> But if we're talking about things that are starting to go, that mm. like your eggnog was left in the back of the fridge or whatever, happens quite often with things that have a short life like herbs. Yes. And they're so expensive to buy those fresh herbs. The last thing you want is for them to go. Yeah. So what do you do if you've bought, say you're doing a recipe and you only need so much fresh rosemary mm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. What do you do with the rest of it? We had a recipe shared with us from a guest ryan sanderson from eat more barbecue podcast and he made a delicious marinade slash rub the recipe is for prime rib on a rotisserie on the barbecue which i have made a couple of times and it is so good but i've also put this on lamb i've put it on mm-hmm. chicken just whatever herbs you've got yeah and olive oil mm-hmm. you're gonna blend that all up you can do this whichever way you want throw garlic in there and you can freeze it when you've got these herbs, maybe you don't, mm-hmm. maybe you've frozen them because you didn't know what to do with them. You toss them in the freezer, pull them out, put it all together. Yeah. Make your rub, freeze the rub, and then you can use it on meat. It would probably be great even on roasted veggies or Ooh, I'm that's picturing a like great a great idea, like a grilled butternut squash or I mean, oh yes, anything really yeah it's a great way to use up herbs i do often also just dry them Mm -hmm. so i'll grab that little bundle tie it with a string and i hang it in my front window once it's crispy i'll take it down and i'll put it in my oven for maybe like five minutes at a low temperature just to get it all the moisture out and then it goes into my jars or toss it in your broth bag you can also do that with any of these herbs toss them in your broth broth bag stems and all throw the whole thing in there use the stems not just the leaves of the herbs well some of them are twiggy but again in your broth bag that's fine Mm -hmm. but like if you're cutting up basil and it has a stem cut up oh yeah just throw the stems in there too cutting up parsley put the stem in there it doesn't have to be just cilantro the green stems if you like cilantro i know you don't the rest of us who do the stems are the best tasting like the more flavor is in the stem no way yeah yeah Ah. So don't just pick off leaves unless it's a twig, <laughs> like a, um, what am I thinking? Like thyme has that mm. real twiggy. Thyme is a little like. bit too twiggy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It gets stuck in your teeth. Toothpick? Toothpick it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Something like an obvious one is bananas. Mm. They're starting to go brown, especially if you're a little bit picky about it and you're like, oh no, there's like two brown spots. I won't eat it. That's okay. Wait, yeah. no judgment here. Toss that in the freezer hole, pull mm-hmm. it up later and make muffins with it. And I'm told you can do the same with an avocado. Mm-hmm. And it's going a bit too soft or you cut it open and it's like half of it's like brown. Got some like, funny mm-hmm. spots. Keep it because it works in the same way. You don't just have to bake with those pieces. You can mm-hmm. also put them in smoothies. Mm-hmm. Banana, yogurt, berries. Avocado. Perfect mm-hmm. smoothie 
items. Same thing if you have, like you said, berries. Mm, and yeah. let's say they're starting to get a little mushy, but there's nothing wrong with them. Yeah. Yeah. Like when raspberries start to get too soft, you don't want to eat it fresh. You mm. can still bake with it. You can freeze them and later bake with them or put them into smoothies. Yeah. Just about any fruit. If your apple's got some yeah. bruises, you don't really want to eat it, but you can still chop it up. And something like zucchini kind of mm. works the same way where you can chop or shred that up and then use it in baking Yeah. or soups because it's going to kind of break down in a soup anyways if you don't need the crispness yeah. of it. Yeah. And if you take the moisture out, you can put zucchini in your meat sauce as well if you're making like a mm. pasta sauce. It's a really good way to kind of stretch it and make it meatier without adding more meat and tomatoes mm. when tomatoes are starting to get a little soft i like to roast them with just a little olive oil and salt and pepper like yes. and maybe some herbs and sumac oh sumac sumac on your roasted tomatoes that's the game changer <laughs> you've got <laughs> Starting to soften tomatoes, you've got wilt, slightly wilty herbs. Put it all together with the sumac yep. in the oven, roast them up, and then when they're cooled, toss them into a container and pop it in the freezer. And then later, oh. middle of winter, you want to pull those out and make a tomato sauce mm -hmm. or put them in your chili or in your soup or mix yep. it with pasta. Mm, so good. I do that when tomatoes go on sale because there is a season for them, especially um, in the greenhouses and in Southern California and Mexico, when those tomatoes go on sale, I buy them like cases and chop and freeze or roast and freeze. And oh boy, is that good. Mm -hmm. And you can blend them if you'd rather have like a Oh, you sauce. can blend them. Once you've unfrozen them, you can do whatever you want with them. Mm -hmm. I think we're just about done, but I have a bonus item that I was thinking about. Bonus item. <laughs> <laughs> okay, pickles, pickle juice. <gasps> Don't throw out your pickle juice because you can, it'll keep just mm -hmm. once the pickles are all out, just keep the jar in the fridge. It'll be fine. Yeah. Use it later for like marinating meat. There's probably other things you can do with it as well, but that's the one that comes to mind. It tastes good. That's all I know. <laughs> yeah. You never throw out your pickle juice because you for sure want to marinate if you're going to make carnitas. Mm. Yeah. Or you can use pickle juice too, like anywhere you would use an acid in your cooking. If you want to mm -hmm. add a little bit of that garlic, dill, vinegar flavor. Yes, for sure. I've also heard it's healthy just if you like to take a shot of pickle juice. <laughs> I've never <laughs> tried that. <laughs> Sounds kind of gross, but I'm not sure. Well, <laughs> I think I might have to cut off your bonus item right there. <laughs> This is fun. I love talking about all the different ways we use up scraps and things in our kitchen that stretches that food a little bit further. Mm -hmm. And your budget. Waste less and get more out of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean some very basic things. Buy what you're going to eat. Mm -hmm. Try not to buy the bulk unless you have a plan to process it like you said with the tomatoes. Yep. Or if you can't buy it in any other way, be thinking about what am I going to do to keep this and mm -hmm. make it last? And think about storage because things like tomatoes, if you put them in the fridge, they're going to go bad a lot quicker than if you just leave them on the counter. And right. you know, yeah. things like think about where you're storing, how you're storing things to, to keep them for longer. On that note, I'm going to just slip in with a, when you bring your berries home, make a vinegar and water bath, cold water bath, put your berries in that bowl, let them sit for maybe five minutes. Rinse them when you take them out and you can put them right back in the same package. And I usually just put a piece of paper towel down. That way they keep so much longer. And mm -hmm. then I don't have to worry about my kids washing things. I'll often just yeah. pull the top, like the leaves off of a strawberry and put them back in like that. And then they eat the whole berry and they're not cutting off parts of it. If you can make time for it when you come home, as you're putting away your groceries, get that cold water bath going as you do things and you'll see what comes off and you'll be happy that you wash them and it's not sitting there growing on your food. Good tip. Okay. I hope we've given, we'll post a whole bunch of links to ways that we cook the broth that we make, the brines that we use, and all that fun stuff in the show notes, or check us out on Instagram. Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube. We're all over the place. You can even listen to us on YouTube. Did you know that? That's right. Or come see us at the grocery store. You'll know where we are. Sounds like a duck quacking over in the <laughs> produce section. It's probably one of us. <laughs> 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 
And now for the fine print. For links to recipes and many other random things we talked about in this episode, check out the show notes or our website, www.3kitchenspodcast.com. Join us over on Instagram, Facebook, Threads, YouTube, and TikTok to see what we're cooking up next. And if you love the show, tell a friend. Word of mouth is the number one way people learn about new podcasts. Thank you so much for listening. Look at the price of this chicken. You're paying all you're paying for is all that water. They're ripping us off. <laughs> and then she stormed away and I was like, yeah.